Hungary is in Middle Europe. Hungary is a really small country. The population is uh, about 10 million people. Budapest is, is such a beautiful city with a lot of life in it. The city kind of has a personality, like it's greedy and keeps a part of every historical era it has lived through. You have the most beautiful villas from 200 years ago and then some buildings from 100 years ago and it's just kind of like walking through eras and seeing everything that the city has gone through. I think the most unique thing about it is, you know, that uh, Budapest is divided into two parts, Budapest, and they are connected by a lot of beautiful bridges. And there are a lot of places to go to hang out with friends. We have the Buda Castle, the Parliament, the Citadel, Hero Square, all the bridges like Chain Bridge, Liberty Bridge, Elizabeth Bridge, uh, Margaret Bridge, which also leads the way to Margaret Island, which is like a huge park in Hungary. Budapest at night is really beautiful. It's even more beautiful if you go to the Galiat Hill, which is like the mountain of Budapest, you can say. You have a really, really good view to the Danube and to all the bridges, and it gives you like such good vibes. I'm Jano Sárosi. I'm a student of, uh, at uh, Budapest Fasori Lutheran Gymnasium. It's a religious school. It's a Lutheran uh, high school, meaning that we have religion classes. And we also have pieties every Monday. So I think it's a really positive thing uh, in this school that we, we concern the religious side of everything. Our school is mostly known for having a lot of famous alumni, several Nobel Prize winners. I know the most about Noima Janos. He wasn't a Nobel Prize winner though, but fun fact, without him, there would be no computers today. So we know the most about him because everyone learns, like guys be proud because the Hungarian was involved in making the computers. Debating is uh, the most cultural way to change ideas. Unfortunately, it's not so popular here in Hungary, but we are trying to make it more known. When we first started the debate club, we were a bit afraid of uh, there won't be people who are interested in it. So it was a surprise for me that there were a lot of people interested in it. My first impressions when we first met with uh, some other students and everyone was like smiling but still a bit shy. Those smiles give me the relaxation that uh, it, it won't be a scary place or something. As soon as we got there, I started to realize what this thing will be about. Uh, then uh, Skip held his first speech. The whole uh, message of it just, just grabbed me and, and, and pulled me in. So I just realized what the goal of this whole event is. Uh, I think it's about bringing the nations together and kind of making them uh, accept each other. We are all so um, equal, but yet so different at the same time. And this is how we get on as a family. When we start debating, talking in front of other people and sharing your opinions, that is way out of your comfort zone. But when you go to Japan, that's when you're right out of your comfort zone in a different country. No one around you is familiar and this is when you really have to just be yourself. Actually, when I left uh, Budapest, uh, the first thing that was in my mind is to create friendships and talk to people. And it was, I, th I don't think it was about uh, debating. It was about experiencing debating. It's not about the competition part. I have the map on my wall, the big world map I have, and I just kind of look up and just see a random country and almost start crying like my friends are there, they are so far away from me. It opens up new worlds that you can reach, so it kind of just shows you how much you have to work to get out there again. There are three things in my mind when I think about my future. One, uh, that I might be economic uh, informatics, so the guy who uh, programs mo uh, economic models, 
or I might be an informatic engineer because the future is based on uh, these subjects and I'm good at math so it's not a problem for me to, to understand its logic and I, I kind of like to solve problems and this field has a lot of challenges and that's what I like about it. When uh, I left Hungary and I went to Japan, before that everything was like fine and everything was like cool. But after I got back, I felt like everything was better than I have ever thought before because I started appreciating little things more. I started appreciating my family, my friends, all the people that support me, all the opportunities that I got. I definitely want to be an international person. I would just love to discover the world, discover new people, make relationships with people, make friendships. Ever since I went to Japan, I've decided to keep this thing going and I would love to create something big, like something huge with these people that I met uh, during this fantastic event. So I just travel around and I start thinking about an idea. Like, our world is, it's messed up. Like, what if we try to do something, like change something, like make a new ban or rule? And I always start thinking and everything is just so connected that you have to change everything. So I always just like to sit around and I always end up with, I'm so young, I can't think about stuff like this. It's just, I just can't do it. So you can meet me one day and I want to go and learn law and uh, I don't know, sue people who hurt their spouses and the next day I want to work in environmental safety. So I think I'm still too young to decide. I might want to uh, travel and try new places, even in Europe or work abroad. I want to try so much things, go to so many places, meet as many people as possible, as many cultures as possible, because it says a lot about how the world works. To the PDWC community, I would tell them that I have so much love for you guys, and I know you have so much love for the world. Just be yourself and spread the positivity. Pretty simple.